fatigue now. All right, so did you guys study fatigue anywhere during your course or is it the first time? You never heard about fatigue? You studied before. Which model? Really? Who, who did that? In the first year? First year? Oh, first year is very basic, maybe. Um, yeah, you might, you might have talked about, uh, you know, what is a fatigue, what is fatigue, but uh, you might have talked something like this, okay, uh, material, um, um, when loaded in, with, with a cyclical loading, right, uh, or a varying load, right, changing in time, uh, um, it might fail for a stress lower than the yield stress of the material, right? Uh, so basically, the, the material doesn't like so much to be loaded in cyclical, uh, with cyclical uh, forces. And cyclical forces we have, uh, for example, I can give you an example. Um, imagine, for example, in a gearbox in a car, for example, right? You have, you have a shaft, something like this. You have a shaft here. This shaft is... Okay, is there's some bearings, okay, supporting the shaft, yeah? Shaft is rotating in these bearings and you might have some gears, right? One gear here, which is connected with, let's change color, with a different gear uh, in a different shaft. For example, something like this, that is also supported in some bears. Typical gearbox, right? For example, this shaft that you have here at the top is rotating, so it is rotating, right? And then because of this gear here, you will have applied in this shaft basically a, a force, yeah? You agree? Uh, which is the, the, the gear force. So basically you will have a shaft that is going to be rotating and also under in bending as well, right? Because this force will bend this shaft as well. So what is going to happen? If you look, if you look at the shaft from this way, you will have what? You will have, imagine it is a circular cross section. Yeah? So this circular cross section, it is rotating. And then you have the neutral axis on, on the shaft. And then you have, in bending, you know that you have a distribution of stress like this, right? For example, here at this point, you have a tensile stress, direct stress. And below the neutral axis, you might have, for example, a compressive stress, yeah? You, you all know these kind of things, right? Bending, you studied bending. Now look at this. Look at what happens to a point, for example, let's, Let's focus on this point here. Because the shaft is rotating for different time steps, this point it will be here, then it can be here, then it will go here, here, yeah? This point is changing, right? So when the point is here at this top position, it will have a stress which is a positive stress. Yeah, the point is above the neutral axis in bending, right? But when the point goes into this position here, at the bottom, this position here, okay? What's happening is that the point will have then a negative stress, a compressive stress, yeah? So if you plot, if you plot that point in a time here and uh, stress, you will have the, 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 the stress at that point of the shaft changing from positive to negative, yeah? Cyclical loading on that point. And this is really a, 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 a problem in fatigue because that point will fail for stresses below the old stress. That's the main problem, right? Okay? Um, so that's why we need to be very careful with when we design for fatigue. 
when, well, when we design, not for fatigue, when we design this kind of structural components, because we need to, if there is a, a, a cyclical loading being applied, we need to design for fatigue. It's more critical than for static yielding of the material, if you want, okay? So you can see that we will have, we will have uh, a cyclical loading, and I can take this figure here to introduce some stresses that we are going to be dealing with. So one stress is, um, maybe I can do a more generic plot. Let me see. Let's do something like this. Imagine you have horizontal axis number of cycles very typical in fatigue to talk about cycles and in this vertical axis you will have stress which we usually we represent not by sigma but by s and then you can have a, a generic load I'm going to put here in red which can be something like this Okay, and we can define here many different measures. One is this one. We call this value the maximum stress, usually S max. Now, quite easy to understand, this one we call the minimum stress. Yeah, so we have a load, a stress that is changing with time, we can define the maximum and the minimum. It's quite easy, this, isn't it? We can define the mean value. The mean value is, okay, also quite easy to understand the mean value. Uh, we can define the mean stress or SM, mean stress. And there are two more things we can define, which <coughs> one is the stress amplitude, which is basically this. We call this SA, stress amplitude. And we can define the stress range, which is something like this, okay? We usually define this by delta S, or stress range or the variation in stress from, basically it's the maximum minus the minimum stress, okay? So these are, the, basically, the, the, the different types of stress we will need to consider in a fatigue problem. Maximum, minimum, mean stress, stress amplitude, and stress range. Yeah? So it's not difficult if you think on this figure. All right. Now... Uh, if you want, we can, we can define here, uh, we can say, for example, stress range is going to be the maximum stress minus the minimum stress. Yeah. We can say that the mean stress, SM, is going to be equal to the maximum stress plus the minimum over 2 is the mean point, right, or the average. What else can we say? Yeah, we can say the stress amplitude is going to be equal to the maximum stress minus the minimum over 2, or if you want, equal to the stress range over 2. We can define this quite, quite basic stuff quite easily. Now, we need to... We need to... Uh, so imagine we... We can go back to this example here. We'll have our structural component, in this case, this shaft of the gearbox that is going to be subject to this cyclical loading. And, okay, we need to, in order to design this shaft for fatigue, we need to understand if this cyclical loading, if the material is going to be able to carry this load or not, yeah? So, for static, uh, design, if you want, we go, how, how do we do this? We go to the tensile test machine, we, we stretch a specimen, right? We get the, 
the stress strain curve stress strain this is the elastic domain this is the plastic domain right this is the yielding stress and usually we use the yielding point to do a static design yeah so we need to do something similar for fatigue it is not a static problem because the, the, the load is changing, but we need to make sure that the material is able to carry that cyclical loading. It's in a similar way, like it is able to carry this static loading if we are doing a static uh, analysis, right? So basically, we need to go to the lab, we need to uh, test the material for fatigue and have some kind of plot like this. Not like this, but... Uh, a similar plot. So the kind of test that we do in the lab is um, is basically a rotating shaft with a weight. Well, that kind of test was done some years ago, many years ago. Nowadays, there's more high tech machines that they do the cyclical loading. Uh, you know, they they apply this loading in uh, with some f in a cyclical way. Okay, but. Uh, maybe 20 years ago or something like that, the test that was done in the lab was, well, you had a, a, a rotating shaft. So basically you had here a, a motor M that was putting some rotation on this shaft. And then here you basically you, you put a mass or a force. And then basically you will have, of course, this, this shaft needs to be supported some way or some in some way, right? So you have this shaft rotating, you put some mass here, or some force at the tip of the shaft, then you will have a, a shaft rotating and in bending, okay? And what you do is, like I, I show you here, before you, you take the cross section of the shaft, yeah? This point is going to be rotating. And you know that is going to be in bending, so we have tensile here, compressive here, right? And then what you do is, well, you count the number of uh, revolutions of the shaft, number of rotations, you, you, you put some counter there, and then when this fails, then you can say, okay, so you know how much is the stress that you have here, the maximum and the minimum stress, because you can calculate this from bending, right? You can say the stress, is going to be given by the bending equation, right? Something like this. You know the second moment of area of the shaft. You know the bending moment you are applying in the shaft, quite easy. You know the dimensions of the cross section, so you know the maximum distance of the point to the neutral axis, which is equal to the radius, yeah? And then you can quite easily calculate the, the stress. Namely, you can calculate the stress amplitude, which, like I said, is equal to the maximum stress minus the minimum stress over 2. The maximum stress is equal to my over i. The minimum stress, so minus, minus the minimum stress. The minimum stress is, is going to be a negative stress when the point goes into compression, right? Yeah, so if you do these calculations, you get, let me move this a little bit. If you do these calculations, you get that your alternating stress is going to be equal to my over i. And then this is what you will then use to plot something like this. You will plot in the lab in this axis here, you will plot the, this alternating stress, SA, which for that particular test is equal to MY over I, is the bending stress. Yeah? Yes? Maybe go back just one minute. Yeah. You said that SMA is equal to MY over G. Can you explain that? Which one? This, this bit here? The minimum. Oh, yeah, it's not two, it's I. Yeah, sorry. This is I, right? Yeah? 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's the end of the day. All right, so in the vertical axis, what we plot is the, the bending stress in our, for that uh, shaft uh, from our test in the lab, or the, uh, the alternating stress, SA. And in the horizontal axis, we plot the number, okay, I can write, number of cycles to failure. You, we plot this in the horizontal axis. For example, if you are using a steel material, you will get typically a curve like this. Uh, where typically these values here is 10 power 7. After 10 power 7 cycles, there is a, the curve becomes flat, so it means this is going to be our fatigue strength, this point, okay? For steel. For example, what this curve tells us is that, imagine for example this is, okay, we have something like this, 700 megapascal, 600, let's, I'm just putting these numbers here, random numbers, Ooh. let's move this guy, 400, 300, 200, something like that. So for example, if you put in this uh, a force here or a mass here in this test that will lead to a st alternating stress SA equal to let's say 500, it means the maximum number of uh, revolutions or rotations of the shaft that you can do before failure is let's say 10 power 5. Yeah? If you put a a mass there that will lead you to a 400 megapascal stress in the shaft. Let's say you can have 10 power, oh, okay, maybe 5 times 10 power 5, yeah? 300, 10 power 6, yeah? You see? So depending on the force that you put there on the shaft, you can uh, you can get the maximum number of the rotations that the shaft can do before it fails by fatigue. But after some point, if your force, for example, is let's say 100 megapascal, <coughs> so it means the number of cycles before failure by fatigue is infinite. You can you can there is no fatigue problem basically. That's what what it is saying for steel. Okay. However, if you are using aluminium, if your material is aluminium, typical curve is something like this. Always decreasing. There is a no, the curve does not become flat at any point. So aluminium behavior at fatigue is very dangerous. You always go, for example, if you put a stress of 100 for, for aluminium, you will get maybe 10 power 8 cycles, not infinite life. Yeah? You see? So depending on material you use, you might have different behavior. So this is for aluminum. Maybe I exaggerated too much. The slope, uh, it goes always down, but not with this slope. But anyway, the message is for aluminum, there is no, let's say that plateau, okay? Like you have for steel. So this kind of uh, curves, they are, they are known as the SN curves. And usually they are represented by this SAR equal to A and F power B. So SN curves means S is from stress. The N comes from the number of cycles to failure. And then this equation that you have here is very popular to have this kind of, no, not popular, it's very common to have this, to give this SEN curve because basically what this represents is, okay, you have this 
you, do, you go to the lab, you get this curve, basically you get different points in this curve, right? And what we do is, with the SCN curve, we approximate these points with uh, this equation, right? So basically we get the values of these coefficients A and B. For example, I can give you an example. I have here... Uh, For example, one example here, I, I said use for your SN curve, use A equal to 839 megapascal, and B is the exponent is minus 0 0.102. So these two coefficients are the ones that do the best fitting for this curve that you get from the lab. Okay? Uh, and why, why am I telling you this? Because when you design for fatigue, Typically, what you have is something like this. Design, for example, this shaft for the gearbox to have a fatigue life of 10 power 7 cycles. Okay? So design for a fatigue life of 10 power 7 cycles. So what you do is you replace this 10 power 7 in this NF, yeah, numbers of cycles for fatigue. Then you calculate this SAR, is alternating stress in a fully R means fully reversed cycle, which is something that you have when you do this. This fully reversed means if you plot the stress, the bending stress, so the mean stress is equal to zero, right? So fully reversed, it goes to sigma plus and sigma minus, and the mean stress is equal to zero, yeah? So this is a fully reversed stress cycle. This is what this SAR means, fully reversed uh, stress amplitude. So what you, you get is, okay, if I want my component or my shaft, for example, to last for 10 power seven cycles, from this SN curve, I can calculate the maximum uh, fatigue stress that I can put on the shaft. Uh, and then from this maximum fatigue stress, we are going to see how we can obtain, for example, uh, the dimension of the shaft, the radius, for example. Yeah? These kind of, of things, okay? Yeah, so this is one thing, SN curve. Another th important thing we need to consider is stress concentration. Did you guys ever discuss it in any different model about stress concentration? You know what is a stress concentration, more or less? So we need stress concentration for fatigue. The reason is, for example, uh, probably someone told you about this typical example, a plate with a hole, yeah? If you stress this plate, Okay, if you stretch this plate with a, a stress sigma, what is going to happen in the vicinity of the plate, you will have something like this. Because of the hole, your stress will go from sigma at this point to three times sigma. There, right? Yeah? Why is this important for fatigue? Yeah, because don't forget that when you design this kind of plate, imagine you have here a cyclical loading, you need to consider the critical stress you have installed in the plate, and that is three sigma, not sigma, because of the hole, okay? Uh, so that's why we need to consider stress concentrations. Uh, well, you can think on stress concentration like something like this. Imagine you have here a notch Imagine you have this plate with this notch, so you have to stretch this plate with this stress. You can think on the notch something like this. Okay, imagine this stress goes here, and then they need to overcome the notch here. So imagine, imagine this stress like if it is a flow, right? Yeah? Stress concentration means in this region here of the notch, this flow is more 
concentrated, right? The density of the flow is because of the notch becomes more concent more concentrated. So it means you will have because of this notch you will have a, a, a stress concentration or a, the stress was raised, right? By some amount. Same thing happened here to the flow uh, here on the plate with the hole. Because of this hole, the stress was raised by three times in this case, right? Yeah? So, this stress concentration, I can now go back here to this initial page where I can show you many different examples of stress concentration. Look at this, these plots that you have there. Let's look at this first plot. There are many authors, many books, many authors that uh, did this study for different uh, geometries, shafts, blades, whatever. Uh, different loading, for example, this shaft here is in bending, and this shaft here is with axial loading P, right? So different loading, um, different... Uh, uh, Notches, for example, this one you have here this notch with the radius r, which is look here in the horizontal axis you have the ratio between the notch radius and the diameter of the smaller uh, diameter of the shaft. Yeah, and then what else do you have? You have the ratio. You have different curves that depend on the ratio between the big diameter over the smaller diameter. Yeah. So for different, for these different ratios, for a shaft in bending, you can calculate, for example, imagine you have, uh, you are using this 1.1 ratio. So you are in this curve here, for a 0.1 R over D ratio, you get this point, which corresponds to a stress concentration of more or less 1.6. Yeah? So you know that because of this notch, the stress, the maximum stress is going to be, so this maximum stress is going to be affected by this 1.6. This is the really uh, the stress that you need to use. Nominal, this one that you have here, even they give this. So the stress that you will have is going to be raised by 1.6 due to this notch, yeah? And we, we need to work with this sigma value that is going to okay so basically uh, we can define so you can see other examples you know different there are many many plots like this in in different books uh, different kind of notches yeah this one well this one is in bending and this axial for example this a plate with a notch here as well in bending, axial, there are more, many, many more, okay? But the thing that we need to consider is that we will have um, a stress concentration, or if you want, this KT, a geometric stress concentration, that will raise our stress. For example, plate, plate with a, an elliptical hole where this dimension is B and this dimension is A of this elliptical hole. So if you are stretching this plate in this direction, yeah? Someone did the study and they concluded that the stress concentration is KT is going to be one plus two times the ratio of A over B, yeah? So if this elliptical hole becomes a circle, A equal to B, yeah? So this KT, okay, for a circle, this KT becomes equal to one plus two, equal to three, yeah? That's what I, I told you here. That's why we have three times sigma. So we can say that the notched, the notched specimen is going to be equal to KT, a geometric stress, times the plane. So plane means 
the plate without this notch or O, right? So if you want, plane, yeah, is the, the plate without the hole, yeah? Okay, so it's going, this KT is a geometric stress concentration or stress razor. Uh, and this is quite uh, uh, common in, you know, gearbox shafts. They have many notches, right? So we need to consider this really. Also in your FEA, that you are doing FEA, right? You have a model FEA, right? So I don't know if you did this already. I think you are doing CFD now first, right? But anyway, you are going to, uh, to do FEA. And when you model something in the vicinity of the knot, you are going to be told that you have to refine much more the mesh in that region. The reason is, if you don't refine the mesh very well in that region, you cannot capture this stress concentration. Yeah? Very interesting thing if you want to do in FEA. Do this example, plate with a hole, okay? Do a mesh here, yeah? A mesh of elements. And then check the stress distribution in this region. You can clearly see the stress being raised at the vicinity of the hole by three times. Quite, quite clear. That will, will automatically show up, okay? Right, so this is a very important thing. This is the geometric. So this stress concentration appears even if you don't have cyclical loading. If you have static loading, if you have a notch, you have this stress concentration. Yeah? But in fatigue, you will also have stress concentration uh, that we call that stress concentration KF, not KT. KF, F or fatigue. So this KF will include the geometric stress concentration plus other things like, for example, the corrosion of the surfaces. If you have a very rough surface, yeah? imagine you have a surface that is not completely flat like this, but it has you know, some micro things. So these micro things, you can look at these like micro notches that will tend to include some more stress concentration. Also, as we have seen, when we do the analysis for steel and aluminium, there is a big difference in, in fatigue behavior, okay? So they also include in this stress concentration for fatigue, they also include the material effect, okay? Some materials are more sensitive to the presence of notches than other materials. So, they defined, uh, when I say they, because, of course, this is, this is something that has been studied for a uh, long, long, long time, said so there was one parameter that is known as notch, I'm going to write here, notch sensitivity. And this is given by this KF minus 1, KT minus 1. Okay? So what you have here, here in numerator, you have the fatigue stress concentration, KF. And in the denominator, you have the static stress or geometric stress concentration, KT. Okay? And this notch sensitivity factor basically measures the sensitivity of the material to this uh, stress concentration, okay? So this K is always bigger than zero and lower and equal to one, yeah? One means fully sensitive, while zero means no sensitive at all. It's quite, quite look, if your K is equal to zero, you get zero, it's going to be equal to Kf minus 1, so it means Kf equal to 1. Kf equal to 1 means no stress razor, right? Yeah? No sensitive. No sensitivity at all. So look at the first slide. I also have here a figure for you. I took from one book that what you have in this figure, look, they analyze many different materials. 
Kenchet and tempered steel, annealed or normalized steel, average aluminum alloy. And what they plotted was, well, for different notch radius, what you have here on the horizontal axis at the bottom is notch radius, radius in inches. At the top is notch radius in millimeter. Well, it doesn't matter. But what you have in the vertical axis is this notch sensitivity ratio. As you can see, this goes from zero to one maximum, okay? So, for higher notch radius means, in these regions, it means the material becomes more sensitivity, more sensitive to this um, stress concentration. Different materials, they have different sensitivities, okay? So, uh, so, what is the procedure to get this stress concentration? So, to, to make a summary of all of this, the procedure is, first, you get the geometrical stress concentration. Depends on the geometry of your notch, okay? You can get this from those plots I show you. Then you need to get the notch sensitivity in some way. This is something that needs to be tested in the lab. You get this, that, that is given. Then after getting this, usually what we do is we obtain the fatigue stress concentration, which is the one that we really need to know by solving this equation. So this is going to be equal to the notch sensitivity times QT minus 1 plus 1. Okay? So these are the steps. This is the first step get the geometric stress concentration. Second step, get notch sensitivity factor. And then the third step is to get the KF, which is what we are going to need for our fatigue analysis. OK? Not so difficult. What we need really to make sure is that we get the stress concentration right for fatigue. OK? Now, before I talk on fatigue criteria, which is the last thing we need to talk before we do a, an example on fatigue, to design for fatigue, before I start talking on fatigue criteria, I think we might need to do a break. Yeah? Five, seven minutes break. Yeah? All right, so... Now... We need to talk on fatigue criteria. Why do we need to do that? Because uh, because basically we will have, so we can go back to the first slide. Not first, maybe this one. Because there are two important stress measures that we need to consider. One is the mean stress, this one here, mean stress, which is this mean value, okay? And the other important stress is the alternate stress. So what I'm saying is that, for example, when we do fatigue uh, design or fatigue analysis, one thing is to have this cyclical stress like you have in this plot with a mean stress and alternating stress. One thing, one different thing can be, for example, if you have a fully reversed. So in this case, the mean stress is equal to zero, right? So the behavior in fatigue is very different. Okay? So we need to have basically a, a way of... Um, using these two important stress values, the mean stress and the alternating stress, for our design for fatigue. And that's when we have the fatigue criteria. And basically, the fatigue criteria you, we will have in these two axes, horizontal and vertical axes. We will have, in the horizontal axis, we will have the effect of the mean stress, Sn, which is the average. Okay, you have stress changing from a maximum to a minimum. The average of these two, if you want, I can write something like this. Mean stress 
is the maximum plus the minimum stress over 2 is the average of these two. And in the vertical axis, we will have the effect of the alternating stress, SA. Okay? And then we are going to study here only three fatigue criteria. One, the Soderberg, which is going to be this line, if you want. Here you have the SAR, or the fully reversed alternating stress. And here in the mean stress axis, we will have the yield stress, yield stress of the material. So if you want, this mean stress is a kind of a stress that will compare the static yielding of yielding, not only yielding, for the Soderberg, this is known as the Soderberg, Soderberg fatigue criteria. And this can be written something like this. SA, I can do something like this. SA over SAR plus SM, the mean stress, over the yield stress of the material equal to 1. So if you want, this is the equation of this line that gives me the Soderbergh criteria. Okay? So basically means, this means what? A point, imagine you have your shaft, a point in the shaft that, that will have an alternating stress and a mean stress, yeah? If that point will have an alternating stress and a mean stress that corresponds to a point inside or below this Soderberg curve, it means it is safe for fatigue. If it has a, a point where the alternate, for example, this point here outside with this alternating stress and with this mean stress, means a point that will fail for fatigue. Okay? Yeah? So this is one criterion Soderbeck that is very common to be used for aluminium materials. Yeah? There is another criterion I'm going to represent here in blue, which is the modified Goodman criterion, which is also a line. The difference is, well, you get in the vertical axis, you get the same fully reversed alternating stress, but in the mean stress axis or in the horizontal axis, you have not the yield stress of the material, but the ultimate strength of the material, SU, okay? So we can say the sort, so this one in blue, I can write, is the modified Goodman fatigue criterion. And if you want, we can write here the modified Goodman. You have SA over SAR. This part is the same. You also have the mean stress here. But now in the denominator, you will have the ultimate strength of material, not the yield stress. Okay? That's the only difference. So we can say that we can see that the Soderbergh criteria is more conservative for fatigue than the modified Goodman, right? For example, what I mean is that a point here, this point, according to Soderbergh, is a failing point, but according to modified Goodman, is a safe point, yeah? So that's why Soderbergh is more conservative than modified Goodman. So all these criteria, they, don't just, they didn't just appear from nowhere. This came from experimental evidence, okay? There is a, uh, a third one that we, we will need to consider is the Gerber criterion, which is a quadratic criterion. We have the same al fully reversed alternating stress in the vertical axis, and we have the same ultimate strength of the material. Yeah? 
So what I can say is that the equation for this is going, so the alternating stress over the fully reversed alternating stress is the same, but this bit here, the mean stress over the ultimate strength, this ratio is squared. That's why you have a quadratic. So this Gerber, I can write here, this is known as the Gerber fatigue criterion. This is very uh, used for steel. Gerber is very used for, for steel. So if you want, for example, some many fatigue tests, they verify that the data for steel fitted. Yeah, this Gerber curve give a, the best fitting for the data that they obtained for steel, while the other two they are more used for aluminium. There are more fatigue criteria, okay? But I think for the purpose of this, so basically what you get basically is going to be different equations involving SA and SM, right? But I think for the, the outcomes we want to achieve, this is enough for this model, okay? So I think now the best way to, to show you how you can design for fatigue is to do a practical example. So let's start with uh, let's start with uh, a first example. I can write here for you. So basically, there is a smooth bar subjected to a constant stress range. So delta S is given stress range of 1110.6 megapascal. Yeah, don't forget stress range is the difference between the maximum stress and the minimum stress. This is given. They also give you the mean stress, so SM equal to 200 megapascal. And they give you some material properties. They give you the ultimate strength of the material is 1400 megapascal. The yield stress of the material 1170 megapascal. And they give you the coefficients A and B for the SEN curve. So A is 1240 megapascal and B is minus 0 0.06. Yeah? The question is, they want to know the fatigue life of this smooth bar, so part A, fatigue life. And they want you to use the modified Goodman, Goodman criterion. Okay? So let's start with this part A. So the first thing you need to get, as you know from the modified Goodman criterion, we define it here, this one in blue, right? Look at this, what do we have so far? We have the ultimate strength of the material, yeah, is given, 1400 megapascal, right? It's given in the question. We also have the mean stress, it is also given in the question. Yeah, mean stress is 200 megapascal. We can calculate SA, stress amplitude, from the stress range that was given. We can do it now. In fact, we can say SA is the stress range over 2, right? So basically, SA is going to be equal to 1110.6 over 2 which is equal to 555.3 megapascal. So we know the stress range as well. Sorry, the stress amplitude, SA. So if we use the modified Goodman criterion, I can solve for SAR, which is the, what is this SAR? Don't forget this SAR is the stress that you have in the stress in the SEN curve. So what you have here in this vertical axis, in fact, is the SAR, okay? So basically, 
is this SAR here on the left hand side of your SN curve. So once you get this SAR from the modified Goodman criterion, you know coefficient A, you know coefficient B, you can solve for the fatigue life, which is this NF. Quite simple as that, okay? So, using the modified Goodman criteria, what I'm going to write here is this. So, we know stress amplitude is 555.3. Fully reversed stress amplitude, SAR, is unknown. Mean stress is 200 megapascal. Ultimate stress is... 1400 megapascal equal to 1. We can solve this equation for SAR, which gives something like uh, 1400 Okay, so we can. This is going to be 1 minus 200. Yeah? So from here you get um, SAR is going to be equal to uh, 555.3 five, five over 1 minus 200. Yeah, you agree with me? Which is, according to my calculations here, 647.85 megapascal yeah so once you get this SAR you can use the SEN curve you have the A coefficient which is 1240 uh, and F and with exponent minus 0 0.06 so it means you replace SAR by 647.85 yeah this guy here equal to 1 2 4 0 and f minus 0 0.06 which will give you a fatigue life of 50 times 10 power 3 cycles yeah so this is using the modified Goodman criterion if you have a smooth bar with this stress stress range and mean stress, it means it can only last for 50,000 cycles. If you do more than 50,000 cycles, it means it will fail. Okay? If you use the Soderbergh criterion, so you have to do everything again but the only difference is instead of using SU you need to use the old stress of material which is given like this so if you do that you will get for the Soderbergh criteria you will get a fatigue life of 30.78 times 10 power 3 cycles so this is the Soderbergh This is modif the first one is the modified Goodman. And as you can see, Soderbergh, like I told you, is more conservative. You are more on the safe side, which is not a bad idea. Yeah? Do you remember? I don't, I'm not quite sure about this, but I, I heard... Do you remember Ayrton Senna, the Formula One driver? One of the reasons of the accident was the steering shaft failed by fatigue yeah uh, and then that's why he crashed so fatigue is very dangerous so uh, also one thing fatigue is still a subject that is not very well controlled or understood yeah so that's one more reason why we should use more conservative like Soderbergh if I was working something that I had to design for fatigue, I will go for Soderbergh. Yeah? I'm more on the safe side of things. So this was a quite an easy one example. So let me 
do one more example, more co a bit more complex. So, so let me see. Yeah, this one is nice. So let's do now this example here, which basically, so let me try to summarize. There is a shaft, a shaft. Seven point six A. So basically, you have a shaft like this. Okay. This has a notch radius R. It is in bending, I think. Let me see. Mm. Yeah. So this is bending subject subject to a bending moment. Yeah. We have something like this. So this dimension is fifty millimeters, while this one is fifty five. This radius is one point three millimeters. So all of this is in millimeters. Okay. Uh, bending moment M. So they are saying this M goes from zero to M. So basically, you are applying here a, a bending moment that is changing from zero to M. And what you know, they are saying this is made of uh, quenched. Tempered steel. Uh, now they are saying also another thing they are saying is that uh, the fatigue stress concentration, so I'm going to put KF, is affecting, okay, affecting. both SA, alternating stress, and SM, the mean stress. Okay, so basically there is going to be a stress concentration here that is raising the stress for both the alternating stress and for the mean stress as well, okay? Uh, what else? They want you to use the modified Goodman Criterion modified criterion, and they the question is M. They want you to calculate M for the shaft to last ten power six cycles. Okay. They give you some material properties like the ultimate strength of material that you will need to use for the modified Goodman criterion. They want you to use those plots that I can that I show you already for the notch sensitivity. And they also give you the coefficients for the SEN curve. A is 500 megapascal, and the exponent B is minus 0.1. Yeah. So the first thing to do is to use the. So we need to. We need to get the fatigue stress concentration, as you know, is given by, as we said, given by this expression. We need to get this geometric stress concentration, and for that we need to use this plot that I can we need to use this plot here. Yeah. So we have a uh, one point radius of one point three. 
So this R over D is going to be equal to 1.3 over the small diameter was 50. How much is this, please? 1.3 over 50. Sorry? Not 2.6? Yeah. Okay, so if you have not point not 0.26, so this is not point not 0.05, this point, yeah? So not point not 0.26 is more or less in here, right? So if you, okay, we need to know one more thing, this ratio D over D. So this D over D, big D over small D is 55 over 50, right? This is 1, 1 1.1, isn't it? So 1.1 is the, this curve, the third curve from the bottom. So the third curve, so is this point. So we have a geometric stress concentration of KT equal to 2.2. You all agree with me? Yeah? So, we can say this guy is going to be equal to 2.2. We can put here. Now I need to get the notch sensitivity. And for that, I need to use this other plot. Oops. This one here, okay? So the first thing you need to know is which material we are using, and they told us the material is quenched tempered steel, so it should be this curve here, yeah? This curve in red, you agree? Now, notch radius in millimeters, it was 1.3, right? So 1.3, so we need to see on this scale here at the top, 1.3, let's say this is 1.5, 1.3 is more or less something like this. So we get this point, I will say 0 0.95, yeah? More or less, right? 0 0.95, so this guy is 0 0.95, so we can calculate in fact our QF as 0 0.95 times 2.2 .2 minus 1 plus 1. So this is going to be, how much is this? I have here 2.14. Yeah. Now, we need to get the maximum stress and the minimum stress. Starting with the maximum stress, S max. So we have this shaft in bending. So the stress comes from bending, but for this example, the, even these plots, they give us the equation for the stress from bending. You can get this equation quite easily, all right? Um, so we are going to use this equation here for the maximum stress. So I can put it here. So this is going to be equal to 32 bending moment over this. So don't forget our bending moment M is what we are looking for. We want to know what is the maximum bending moment that we can apply on that shaft so that it does not fail in fatigue, for fatigue. So we have 32M. Uh, so I converted the, from millimeters to meters. 50 millimeters was the dia diameter, right? So if you do that, you get something like the maximum stress is going to be 
4.87.3 m function of this bending moment m the minimum stress don't forget that in the question it was said that the bending moment m ranges from 0 to m so the minimum stress comes when the bending moment is equal to 0 so we can say that the minimum stress is going to be equal to 0 right so once we have this we can easily calculate the alternating stress which is the maximum stress minus the minimum over 2 so this is going to be equal to 81487.3 m over 2 or if you want 40743.65 m and we can also calculate the mean stress we are going to need these two for the fatigue criteria right mean stress is the maximum stress plus the minimum stress over 2 which is going to be also equal to 4743.65 m okay now so we have the alternating stress so alternating stress and mean stress is something that you will always have to calculate yeah always in a fatigue problem you can write down this alternating stress SA and mean stress SM you will always have to calculate this yes <laughs> oh the maximum stress comes from here oh the maximum stress uh, comes from uh, comes from the bending of the shaft right is given here but you can obtain from the bending right the bending moment times the distance to neutral axis which is look yeah okay we can I, ca I can show you here you have a shaft right this diameter is D so here is the neutral axis so the maximum distance of a point to the neutral axis is diameter over 2 right is equal to the radius yeah so the, the bending stress is the bending moment times the distance to the neutral axis over the second moment of area. Second moment of area, I think, is PD power 4 over 64, eventually. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, the thing is, you need to, because you are looking to the maximum stress, you are looking to S maximum. So in this equation, you need to use the maximum distance to the neutral axis, and that is equal to the radius of the shaft. you agree? So you will have bending moment times the radius, which is diameter over two. And I think, I'm not quite sure of this one. It's something like this, yeah? So this D cancels with this power four, and then you will have D power three. Yeah. So you end up having this equation here, right? Okay? Comes from bending. All right, so yeah. So we have this alternating stress and mean stress. Now, what do we have to do now? So modified Goodman criterion, don't forget, is this. This is a modified Goodman criterion. One mo more important thing you, you need to know for the modified Goodman criterion is in, for this example in particular, they are saying this, this point here, stress concentration, they are saying that our fatigue stress concentration, KF, is affecting both SA and SM. So what do we have to do is something like this. In the modified Goodman criteria, I'm going to affect SA with the stress razor, and also the SM, I'm going to affect SM with the stress razor as well. This is said in the question. KF affecting both SA and SM. So I need to raise my SA and SM with this KF stress raiser. Yes. How do you know to multiply? That's. I I show you here. 
the, this, right? The effect of a stress concentration is when you multiply the plane stress by the, the stress razor. In this case, I show it for static stress concentration, but for fatigue stress concentration, it's the same thing. You multiply the, the stress by the stress razor, okay? So that's the thing. So what, let's see what we have in the modified Goodman. So we have SA, we have SM, we have the fatigue stress concentration, we have the ultimate strength of material. We can calculate the SAR, comes from the SEN curve. Yeah? I can say that SAR is equal to A and F power B, right? Our SEN curve. We have A and B, so A is 500 megapascal, is given. And F, I think, is also given in the question. Let's see. Yeah, and F is given here. Look at this. They, the question is calculate the bending moment for the shaft to last 10 power 6 cycles. So our NF is 10 power 6. Yeah. So 10 power 6. This exponent B is also given minus 0 0.1. So if you do these calculations, your SAR is going to be Oh, we need to be careful. We need, I did something wrong here. I'm mixing the units. That's what I did wrong. The reason is, in this equation here, I'm using meters, right? Look at this. I converted the diameter from millimeters to meters. So I will have my units that are going to be Pascal. Pascal is Newton per square meter. Yeah? I'm working with meters, so my units for stress are going to be Pascal, not megapascal. And this 500 is megapascal, so I need to convert megapascal to Pascal. Don't mix the units. I, I did that mistake here, but I'm fixing. To convert to Pascal, I need to multiply this by 10 power 6. That's it. 500 by 10 power 6. So if I do that, I get a stress of... 125.6 megapascal or 125.6 times 10 power 6 pascal is the same thing and now look at this I can now use my modified Goodman equation what is this Stress concentration Kf, we calculated this 2.14. So 2.14 times Sa, we calculated here Sa is 40,743. So I'm going to copy this Sa. This is my Sa. Yeah. So I can do something like this. This is SA. I need to divide this by SAR. Look at this. In the modified Goodman criterion, SAR is 125.6 times 10 power 6. I need to use Pascal because SA is in Pascal. Now, plus KF again, so 2.14 times SM. SM again is the same as SA. 4743.65 M. So this is SM, the mean stress. The ultimate strength of the material was given and equal to 700 megapascal. So I'll put here 700 converting to pascal times 10 power 6. This needs to be equal to 1. Look at this from this equation. The only unknown you have is the bending moment. So you can solve this equation for the bending moment, which will give you a bending moment of 1216.4 Newton meters. Problem solved. So it means if you want that shaft to last for 10 power 6 cycles, if you apply a bending moment that is higher than this, it means it will last less. Yeah?
okay? Or if you want, if you want that shaft to last for 10 power 6 cycles, the maximum bending moment you can apply is 1,216.4 Newton meters. If you apply more than this, it will last less than 10 power 6 cycles. Yes? No, fatigue analysis is whenever you have a stress changing in time. We are going to see next week how we can have uh, many different stress cycles. For example, in aircraft, you can have different stress cycles. We are going to see that next week, okay? But for today, we have to finish. All right? <laughs>